welcome. My name is Jim, Ward 3 City Councilor Jim Nash. Uh, welcome to the Transportation and Parking Commission meeting for uh, June. Um, this meeting is um, uh, videotaped and audio recorded, and you can watch it on public TV, but everybody just needs to know that. Um, and now it is time for public comment. Um, Who'd like to go first? The, the taxi folks were here first. So. Hi, my name's Elizabeth Brown. I'm part of the owner of Aaron's Paradise Transportation. Your full name oh, and, and your address. Okay, Elizabeth Doobie. 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 Do you want our business address or my home address? Home is good. Okay, 371 Covington Road. Asheville, Mass, 0130. For my information, could you give me your business address as well? Yeah, 1 Lovefield Street, East Hampton, Mass, 0127. So what I'm here for today is because we are trying to comply with the ordinance of the taxi company with the business in our Hampton. We have an office in East Hampton, so we're trying to find out how we can go about to fix this because we've been doing business five years in North Hampton, and then we moved to East Hampton for four years now. We were never notified saying we had to get an office in Northampton. We thought our East Hampton license was good because we went to City Hall and the last person that was in there, Wendy, told us that we were fine with our East Hampton license. So we're just trying to find out how we can comply with this and be on the same page. So the, the, the current, well, the newly approved ordinance for taxis requires that the um, that we offer licenses to, only to businesses that reside uh, have an office here in North Hampton. And, um, and Councillor Sharon, do you recall what the reasoning was for that? Um, I, I it'd be good to ask the city solicitor um, what he, I think that was his the suggestion that came from him. So it'd be good to ask about this. Um, perhaps we should put this on the agenda for our next meeting and can um, talk to him in the meantime. And, okay. um, it, it's not your responsibility to have this information, but do you know if there are other businesses that are in similar situations to you by any chance? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Because we, we had one in Northampton, but we needed a bigger location with our cars, so that's why we ended up moving. Well, I really appreciate you bringing it to our attention, and we'll, we'll look into it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And, and one more thing. Um, okay. You have my email address yes. by the card yes. there. So um, if you could send me an email and then we'll be linked up so as information comes to me, okay. I can get a hold of you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, what's the name of the taxi? Aaron Paradise. Aaron Paradise. Aaron Paradise. Aaron Paradise Transportation Services. Yes, thank <laughs> you. Real team effort here, thank you. <laughs> Ready? Good afternoon. Go ahead. Good afternoon, my name is James Lowenthal. I live at 181 Crescent Street. And I understand that at your last uh, meeting a month ago, there was some discussion about uh, use of uh, the full lane on roadways by bicyclists. And I just wanted to address that. Um, first of all, I'll just uh, I'll read you a, a couple of bullet points from massbike.org, that's the Massachusetts Bicycle Coalition website. So that's the statewide bicycle advocacy organization. We have a local chapter, the Pioneer Valley chapter. And they, uh, they summarize the laws that are in uh, MGL, Mass General Law, Chapter 89 and 90. Uh, bicyclists, may you may ride your bicycle on any public road, street, or bikeway in the Commonwealth, except limited access or express state highways where signs specifically prohibiting bikes have been posted. So basically that means all the roads in Northampton are legally available for bicyclists to ride on. Um, at the same time, you must, as a bicyclist, obey all traffic laws and regulations, use hand signals, let people know you're planning to stop or turn, get pedestrians right away, um, and you may ride to abreast, but must facilitate passing traffic. This means riding single file when faster traffic wants to pass, or staying in the rightmost lane on a multi-lane road. But that doesn't say you have to get off the lane. 
It just says if it's a multi-lane order, if there are two lanes in your direction, you have to be in the right one, not the left one. But you can be, it doesn't say anything about where in the lane you have to be. Uh, the law then goes on to say uh, more about uh, uh, driver's responsibilities with respect to bicyclists. And they include the following. Uh, motorists and their passengers must check, oh sorry, it's about doors. Motorists must stay a safe distance to the left of a bicyclist or any other vehicle when passing. And safe distance is not spelled out in Massachusetts law. Some other states it is. Minimum three feet or four feet, whatever, that's typical. Motorists are also prohibited from returning to the right until safely clear of the bicycle, so you can't cut them off. Motorists must pace, pass at a safe distance. If the lane is too narrow to pass safely, the motorist must use another lane to pass. Or if that is also unsafe, the motorist must wait until it is safe to pass. So that's the crux of it. The bicyclist has a responsibility not to uh, block the traffic behind unnecessarily, but the bicyclist has the right to, to take the full lane if it's the only lane there is and if it's too narrow to pass. In other words, if it's a 14-foot lane, that's plenty of room for, uh, for me not to have to uh, ride off the shoulder uh, in, in potholes and glass, uh, but to actually ride on the pavement and to have a, a motorist pass me. Uh, and so uh, in that case, there would be no need for me to take the middle of the lane. But if it's only a nine foot wide lane, uh, that's too narrow to pass. Most cars are seven feet wide. And I, as, a, as a bicyclist, I have the legal right, and it might be in my good judgment, not to hug the right side of the road in that case, because that is an invitation to pass. It's, it, tell, it tells the motorist, you know, you own the road, you do whatever you want. And it, it happens all the time that bicyclists are hugging the right side because they, they're afraid of getting in the way, and they get hit by, they get clipped by, uh, a, a side view mirror that's bigger than the driver thought, or the driver's pulling a trailer, the trailer's wider than the, than the, than the driver thought, and it leads to accidents, some of them fatal. It is clearly in the cyclist's uh, interest and legal right to take the lane when, it, when the cyclist deems that it's too narrow to do that, uh, too narrow to, to pass safely. So there are many cases of both uh, in, in Northampton. Uh, generally, when there are sharrows on the road, uh, the DPW has done, in my view, an excellent job of determining uh, uh, you know, is it is it a narrow lane like Main Street in Florence, where there's definitely not room to share the lane? The share is right in the middle of the lane. That says, look, the bicyclist is perfectly fine in the middle of the lane. When there's a bike lane and there's a full travel lane, there's plenty of room to pass the bicyclist in the bike lane. Uh, so uh, I don't know if that's exactly what you were talking about uh, last month, but that's my uh, bicyclist and bicycle advocate's perspective on it. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. All right, any more public comment? All right, seeing there is none, we'll move to the next thing on the agenda. Agen no. Yes, the roll. <laughs> um, so if we could go around and, um, and introduce ourselves. Um, I'm the chair, Jim Nash, 43 City Councilor. <coughs> Dave Pomerantz, Director of Central Services. Jody Casper, Chief of Police. Krista Grant, Citizen. Donald Scalia, Director of Public Works. Jamie Alvaro Fisher, Citizen. Maggie Chan, DPW. DPW. Thank you. Um, now the next thing on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our previous meeting of May 15, 2018. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second it. Any uh, discussion? Uh, All question. Sure. Is, do we have quorum? Yes. Today? Yes, we do. Okay. I was asking that same question earlier today. Yeah, okay. I, I'll abstain from this vote because I was not here last time. Okay. Yes, six is a quorum. Uh, minus change. Yeah, we're still good. So, uh, any more discussion? All in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Any, uh, any no's? Any abstentions? Say One abstention. Okay, now we're up to reports from departments and subcommittees. Uh, Wayne is not here today. Director Lascalia, would you 
All right, so we're into construction season here. Work is continuing on Hinkley Street. Ludlow Construction is the contractor. Um, that project will be complete by year end. Um, and as part of that project, as everyone knows, there's a uh, raised crosswalk going in at Hinkley and Nonantuck as part of that. Um, Columbia Gas is continuing to install a new gas main on Pleasant Street between Main Street and Kirkland Ave. Chesterfield Road repaving. Chesterfield Road from Spring Street to Shepherd's Hollow is going to be repaved. The project also includes replacing the water line and some drainage improvements. The contract was awarded to Palmer Paving. Construction is anticipated to begin this summer. Um, and then our other paving projects, Pleasant Street, Hampton Ave, Fulton Ave, and Wright Ave. Um, low bidder was Warner Brothers of Sunderland. Um, so this is going to be repaving, drainage, localized sidewalk work, especially on Hampton Ave. Um, pedestrian crossing improvements also on Hampton Ave. Um, we anticipate that work will, will begin later this summer. Um, we'll be doing a, a very robust communication around this um, because it will cause disruption to the downtown area. Um, okay. so Can I ask a question on that? Sure. I'm about to do that while you're in the middle of this. I guess so. Um, sure, go ahead. Sorry, I don't mean to call you problems. <laughs> there was talk about a mid-block crosswalk some time ago that I don't know if it was ever quite able to have been done with this project. It will be. Okay. Um, and then uh, line painting, pavement markings contract. Um, so that contract is being prepared to be bid right now. So we're going to refresh yellow center lines, fog lines, speed hump markings all throughout the city, um, left, left arrows, so the turn arrows. Um, we're also doing uh, markings at the intersection of Henry Street and Montview Ave, um, and also the line striping at Nonantuck and South Main that we discussed here last month. Um, so that's going to go out to bid shortly, and that work will be completed later this summer. And we removed the graffiti from the bike tunnel this morning. Yay! We'll wash it right off. <laughs> <laughs> so it just came right off? Um, well, it was an effort. But Okay. It was removed. Oh, I have a question. With uh, so uh, crosswalks are also getting repainted as well as part of that contract, or is that something we do? No, that's something that we do, um, and all of them citywide will be painted. If you see progress is being made, um, we'll look at next year the efficiency of doing this in house versus contracting it out. Um, we've, we're contracting out quite a bit of our line striping now relative to what we've done in past years. Um, the crosswalks are a lot of like hand work. Um, so the, the price of that rises very, very quickly. So we have to balance the needs of the entire city relative to the crosswalks relative to what we're reasonably able to accomplish in those. Thank you. Any other department reports? Okay. All right. Uh, we have a long list of things today. Uh, we we continue to do uh, some house cleaning around old uh, applications and also a buildup of um, parking zone change requests that we're going to be looking at today. Uh, some of these I expect to go pretty fast, and others we'll see. <laughs> so anyway, the first thing is, up is the Fruit Street. Um, uh, TCA, which um, uh, the recommendation from DPW is to close that traffic calming application. Um, I, I actually uh, took the opportunity to meet with the, the original applicant, Tony Hochstadt, yesterday, and we walked up and down Fruit Street. Um, that um, she um, I think initially she was hoping to get a speed hump, and uh, um, that was not determined to be uh, appropriate for this situation. She did uh, request while I was meeting with her that uh, possibly some of the crosswalks be repainted. There's also a, a faded 25 mile an hour sign, and maybe I've, I forwarded uh, uh, Donna the email earlier today um, that. She, you know, maybe have one of the signs uh, replaced, um, and, and possibly an additional sign. But those are uh, things that um, you know. I leave it up to DPW as to whether or not to, you know, well, 
the line painting you guys will probably get to. And uh, you can go out and assess whether another sign is needed. Um, but uh, I can make a motion, right? Oh uh, yeah, can I ask, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Um, was it determined that like that a counter, putting down a traffic counter wasn't needed or warranted for, do we, I, I don't know who I'm asking, because this is 2012, so. Yep, the counters were, counters were actually placed oh, they were, in okay. 2012, um, and data was presented to this commission in 2012 um, that showed that the 85th percentile speed was 27 miles an hour. So um, it's interesting that you bring up the speed limit on this street um, because it is erroneously posted as 25 miles an oh, hour. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> that is not an approved speed limit. Uh, I don't know the history of the sign that's there. Um, and this is one of these streets that is approved <coughs> by the Prima Fasci speed limit, which is 30. And that's um, classic. Be careful what you. So <laughs> we do need to remove those speed limit signs because it's not an accurate I, I didn't posting. See speed limit and sign. <laughs> therefore, it's not enforceable, and it is false information that we now know about. So the speed limit signs need to be removed. Okay. So we will be doing that, but we'll also be painting the crosswalk. Um, so there is no speed regulation on this street, and again, it's 30 miles an hour. Um, so at the time um, the data was collected, the 85th percentile speed again was 27 miles an hour. Um, the average daily traffic 753 vehicles per day. So we recommend this be closed. I would like to make a motion that we close this traffic calming application. I'll start about any discussion? Is there any other concern from residents that uh, we should be addressing? I mean, that doesn't seem like um, it's a pretty narrow street for much of it, especially when there's cars parked there. But you know, they do get traffic during uh, voting days and things like that. That's probably much more than typical. But I don't know what the residents' original concerns were. I would have reviewed their application. I, you know, I, I think I can speak for the residents of Fruit Street as well as everybody else who's done an application that they observe people speeding from time to time and it sets the, you know, like, why is that person going so fast? Don't they know the speed limit is 30 miles an hour? They probably know that they're way above the speed limit, but that, um, that it's, it, it's a way to stop those, you know, occasional speeding cars and um, while well, the data here suggests that most people were doing under the speed limit, mm -hmm. although it was posted as 25. <laughs> Just um, some information based on the monthly uh, traffic committee that we sit on and meets here. Uh, we've heard from the parking office that another major concern out there is people parking so they're blocking driveways. Mm -hmm. that's a more significant concern. So we discussed it at our last meeting about doing some line striping on the street to really de de delineate parking spaces to help address that problem. Um, and that's coming from the parking office. That's what they're hearing getting complaints about. Okay. Just over, par over parking and blocking driveways. Mm -hmm. So is there any line painting on that street right now? Uh, no. There isn't Maggie, right? Or it's faded, right? I don't, I don't believe it's yeah. yeah, So we discussed our, our meeting last week about actually doing that. So, so perhaps keeping this on the list will justify the expenditure for those lines. I mean, how are you going to how are you going to get that line painting done? Remember how we left that that it was going to go a uh, request to the DPW and I think. Parking maintenance staff would also get involved, could get involved in at least getting the lines marked. Um, you know, I, I bring I bring it up only that so there's a certain amount of money in the city budget every year for traffic calming that, as far as I know, is not all spent typically. And if that group is looking at painting on um, Fruit Street, well, then maybe this is a way you get that work done. So, go ahead. 
Well, I mean, I, I maybe, um, unfortunately, you know, our, our uh, parking representative isn't here today, but I don't know whether, you, you know, you could consider what Mr. Pomerantz is talking about to be um, traffic calming or whether that would really be about parking. And so whether you'd be able to access Yeah, parking spaces are not typically something that is part of our line stripping contract. That's, you know, center lines, right turn lanes, you know, par parking parking space delineation is done by parking. Yeah, right. I'm just thinking of, like, if you're going to use line painting as a traffic calming measure, then you take the whole streetscape on and you do the center line and fog lines or parking stripes as a way to get I mean, I'm not an expert on this. I don't yeah. know exactly what the um, traffic calming um, guidelines are. I don't know if Maggie or, or Don can speak to this better, but it's a pretty small, it's not the type of street that you typically would have a center line for, I don't think. Yeah, it's, it's quite narrow. Um, and, and additionally, the bid documents for our line striping for this year are allowed to go out. So for for, for the street, we're, we're beyond that. Well, I will say from meeting with Tony that she did mention the um, uh, if residents have taken to painting the curb to let people, you know, kind of marking off where cars should be parked. And um, if the, the parking department could um, supply some of that to, you know, help out with that, I'm sure that would be appreciated. So. How do, I, I'm new to this, how do we move that forward? Do we need Nancy here to say they would take that on or? I mean, did you feel like this was in the works? Let me look at it. Okay. Uh, Shall we make a note to have it on the agenda for next meeting to check in and make sure that it is actually progressing forward? Sounds good. It's been so on for another month. It's been six years, so I think we'll be okay on this one. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, I believe we still have a motion on the floor to close this application. Is there any more discussion, or is the idea to put this off for a month? So I'll withdraw my motion. Uh, why don't you make a motion? I was going to ask. Oh, yes, Jamie. Like to make a motion. What, motion to withdraw? Or to uh, no, no, no. Okay. wait till next month? Or? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it's a motion. I mean, we need to do a little research on it. does the parking department take online painting or do we use traffic calming funds to somehow do something to satisfy that? Well, I think the answer is that it would need the the funds would have to come from parking and not from traffic calming. Um, yeah, we don't strike parking spaces with yeah, no, with right. traffic calming funds. That's yeah. not something traffic calming funds were intended for or used for. Right, right, right. I understand. But I think we'll have the answer as to whether or not there's funds in that hit our next meeting. Okay. So let's postpone the motion until the next meeting. I think we need a motion to postpone. Motion. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so we'll move on to the next thing. Uh, Pine Street at South Main Street. Uh, the determination on uh, whether or not to close the traffic calming application. Uh, so I, when I looked over this application, I, it wasn't clear to me as to what. Where the there was no um, um, there's no narrative describing what it is the the original applicant intended uh, and when it uh, addressed and also that um, uh, that uh, Cindy with DPW has been calling in fact she contacted just about everybody on this list um, and the applicant has actually moved and they live elsewhere. And they said they moved because of the traffic at this location. 
But anyway, um, so I'm, I'm not, uh, I'll turn it over to Director Lascalia to uh, speak to the recommendation to close. So this, this application was originally submitted in 2008, and this is part of the backlog of applications that we're trying to move through here. Um, so over time, traffic counters were placed, and PDPC actually did an area of safety study in 2014. And 85th percentile speeds were recorded to be between 27 and 32 miles an hour, posted speed limit 30 miles an hour, so it's not a speeding issue. Um, however, there is a volume issue. So the average daily traffic was 2,716 vehicles per day between South Main and Chestnut Street, and 4,038 vehicles per day between Chestnut Street and Maple Street. Um, so it's likely that that was the original intention of this um, traffic calming application. So PBC, PBPC, again, did this area safety study, and I do not know the history of how they became involved in this. It was before my time here. But the study listed some improvement options, such as limiting travel to one-way eastbound between Chestnut Street and South Main. Um, they also talked about possibly installing speed humps. Um, we've looked at this. We've gone through the PBC. PDPC area safety study. It, at this point, we do not recommend the installation of speed humps because speed is not a factor. Volume certainly is, but you know we're talking about like more than 2,000 vehicles a day. You know, hitting a speed hump, and it's it's just not like a good combination. Um, the one-way uh, street concept is is out there but this would require further study further professional study because that traffic is going to have to go somewhere um, so where is it going to go and how is that going to impact the surrounding neighborhoods um, so so at this point what this commission might want to entertain is the idea of improving visibility at the intersection with south main so where pine and south main intersect you know, there's a crosswalk, and for folks who are coming out of Pine Street, they can't see because there's currently parking on the right-hand side. So what this commission might want to entertain is the idea of creating an ordinance with a no-parking zone to increase visibility at that intersection. Um, outside of that, DPW recommends this be closed. Um, do we know if there have been accidents there, or is there a reason why that would this would be somewhere where we want to put some extra energy? And doesn't stand out to me as anywhere where we have any significant number of accidents, if any. In terms of a no parking zone, how how many spaces would we? Um, you know, we could look at it and say, you know, we want to clear within 100 feet of this intersection so that folks don't have to sort of creep into, you know, South Main Street in order to try to take a left or a right onto South Main Street. So you, you just want to clear maybe 100 feet to the right. Or I mean, it's something that we could investigate, but there's houses there. There currently are no restrictions on either side of the road, so we would have to look at, okay, if we restrict it on one side of the road, are people just gonna park on the other side of the road, and then what's that gonna be the traveled roadway? DPW doesn't have a recommendation on this one way or the other. It's something for the commission to understand. Okay. thoughts? South Main is the one but park there, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. right. Doesn't seem like a dangerous spot to me. My experience with that intersection. When was this originally filed? This one? Oh wait. Oh, okay. I mean, we haven't had any accidents or complaints in ten years. So maybe that would be a good reason to, to, to 
change things up here a little and um, the, the one I want to address next is Vernon Street because I think it'll help us uh, address the um, concerns at Adair Place. Um, so um, so uh, Vernon Street. So the, the ordinance was <coughs> set forward a, uh, a recommendation to um, uh, disallow parking on the southeasterly side of Vernon Street. Uh, we did that at our last meeting. That went to council, and council um, uh, asked that um, they asked that a lot of difficult questions. Uh, that, that they um, there was a lot of concerns about giving up so much parking. Um, and especially giving up so much parking based on uh, what was one uh, complaint uh, through this, um, our, our new uh, parking change request system. Uh, that um, that I, I went out there a number of times to, to look over the area and, um, and that what I saw was that, you know, we, we the, there's lots of opportunity. We could better mark off where the parking can be on that south southerly side of the street, um, and that there was this other issue that the council had uh, talked about, which has to do with um, the situation had to do with the snowplow that was trying to get down the street because uh, there was parking on either side and it was too narrow for that plow to get through. Uh, this was a pli private plow. This wasn't a city plow, um, and that that for it, it council they triggered a lot of discussion about well, is that really a parking issue or is that a snow clearing issue, or um, and um, so I suggested that with with all of this. Uh, with so much up in the air that we send it back to the TPC for further discussion because I don't think it was going to pass um, if we, we kept it as is. Did I describe it pretty well? Um, so um, so with, with, with Vernon Street, what I, what I would like to, to recommend is that we, um, well, before I say that, uh, so Director Lascalni and I have had some conversations about uh, some sort of metric, some sort of criteria for deciding how to handle these situations, such as Vernon, such as Adair, such as Phillips, and that um, we have some criteria on the books right now, which is, you know, one of the things being that I believe it's 20 feet from an intersection, no parking is allowed. and. Um, and in this case at Vernon, that first 20 feet should be no parking. And in fact, on one side of the street, there's there's a parking, there's a sign saying no parking, be, you know, uh, up to this point, um, and then parking beyond. Um, and that we need to do the same on the, the southerly side. Um, there's also there's also a fire hybrid there, that that also um, will create an extend that no parking zone on the southern side. There's also an, an enormous curb cut. So I'm, I'm wondering if we actually just marked it 
using the criteria that we have, that um, we wouldn't have had that call from the plow because somebody was not parked, you know, if they wouldn't be at the hydrant, they wouldn't be up on Elm Street. We don't know precisely where on Vernon they were. And so my recommendation is that we simply apply that on the southerly side and um, and that that is what we, we send back to council. So we did some research on this, your sort of council request for some you know, metric, um, which I, ca I cautioned Councilor Nash on that we want to be careful, <coughs> excuse me, applying with too broad of a brush here. Um, Ordinance 312-27. No person shall park upon any roadway where the parking of a vehicle will not leave a clear and unobstructed lane at least 12 feet wide for passing traffic. So emergency vehicles like fire trucks and ambulances range between 8 and 10 feet. Width of Vernon Street is 25 feet. So if the parking space is 8 feet wide, there's two cars parked across from each other, that leaves 9 feet for the traveled way. The snow plow had a nine foot plow. We had snow encroaching. That's why he couldn't get through. But if you take ordinance 312 27 and then sort of overlay that onto all the street widths in the city, you've got streets that are 10 feet wide, like Massasoit Ave, to 60 feet wide, like Main Street. So theoretically, this means that every street that's less than 28 feet wide has parking restricted to one side. But that's obviously not the best case scenario because you, on most streets you don't have a parking issue or your traffic volumes aren't such that you would have a parking issue. Um, but those are sort of the numbers that we had talked about and right. what our research came back with. So this ordinance is already on the books. In Per the discussion we had the other day, you are recommending that we take things on a street by street basis, because the the street the, the volumes vary. The you know with, that having those parameters for a dead end street, um, uh, parameters for a dead end street are going to be different from that for a two way street that um, uh, a lot of people cut through on and uh, commute on. So, um, but almost every parking request we get is sort of using these same numbers and we can sort of reference the existing ordinance and you're going to start talking about losing quite a bit of parking if we really want to start sort of enforcing this. Do you think that the ordinance is overly restrictive? think if, if we modify the the number of feet it would better fit the city I don't have a <laughs> comment <coughs> oh. I think what I did tell council and Ash was I think streets need to be taken on a case by case basis but with that with the existing ordinance can you not just put up the signage and be done with it I mean, when you're saying you don't want parking on the east side of Burnley Street under our ordinance currently, you could just sign that and be done with it, right? You mean banning the, the parking on the southerly side? Oh, uh, the southerly side, yeah. I think the concern is that you get into sort of a domino effect situation where then yeah. everyone wants, everyone either does or doesn't want to get on their street and so it gets complicated. Right. That is a tough street though. I mean there's a lot of um, especially in the mornings that um, there's a lot of high school traffic that goes through there because people go pick up through the church and they come out and they go one way or another on Burnham Street. I've done this myself and half the time I don't take a left and go down Burnham Street because it's too much of a mess. I take a right and I go to the neighborhood. We've like also got community action, which was down yeah. there. So yeah. tons of people dropping off and picking up kids in the morning. There's buses and vans that come down through there for community action. So it just adds to the whole yeah. flow in the morning. 
and you've got a lot of big trees right up against the curbing down there on that street. So. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll also have people cutting through from Bay State or to get to Bay State. If, if we make it clear that the 20 feet on both ends, um, but there should be no parking there, and mm -hmm. maybe that will hopefully be a problem. And also account for the, uh, the fire hydrant. Mm -hmm. I think between the fire hydrant and that 20 and, and, and the 20 foot setback from the street, I don't think you have space for a another parking space so you're really on on that side of the street I think it's going to be 40 or so feet before you can actually park anywhere so and again this is a seasonal problem this is a seasonal problem and Nancy had mentioned this last time that um, something about but somebody had raised the idea of some sort of um, fix in the winter um, around um, accounting for parking uh, that, that with the snow banks encroaching so uh, so is that a motion yes so um, how to frame it yeah but how do you want to hear it Maggie <laughs> you're the one who usually writes them up right so yes the location so, uh, so no parking on the southerly side of Vernon from uh, from Elm Street. So there's the 20 feet from Elm, and then there's no parking around that. You have it delineated around that fire hydrant, and then um, then from there to the curb cut could be parking, and then the, there's like a 50 foot curb cut for an apartment building. And then after that, there's enough space for another three or four cars to park. But were you saying that 20 feet of that should not be parking because it's another intersection? 20 feet from the intersection, then um, and then uh, delineating, um, accounting for that fire hydrant. I think from the hydrant to the street is just going to be no parking using our 20 foot. Up. What is the, what's the distance you need to be from a hydrant? Oh, yes, yeah, so then it'll probably be 40 feet from the street and it probably would eliminate the problem that the plow ran into. So that's the motion. Second. <laughs> uh, any more discussion? Uh, Yes. You, you suggested it and then it comes Yeah. Oh, did you? No. It's Councilor Nash's motion. All right, well, let's call it my motion. No problem. All right, any. You're good? Okay. <laughs> um, Excellent. Um, any more discussion? Um, all in favor of this motion to change it to uh, use our existing um, criteria for the southerly side of Vernon Street, say aye. 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 Uh, any nays? Any abstentions? Okay, that passes. Okay, now on to a dare place which is letter G. And um, <coughs> so from what I understand, the, the, the biggest change on Adair has to do with, um, rather than using the 20-foot um, setback from the intersection we were just talking about, on the northerly side of the street, we'd be doing 60 feet. Is that correct? That is correct. <coughs> okay. 
And I, I, I'm not sure why, but I'd love to hear why. Um, so there was no existing ordinance on this street uh, prohibiting parking, but there was a sign. So <laughs> street superintendent was reviewing parking on the street and um, when we come across a situation like this, we need to make what is on the street match what is in the ordinance. Um, so the sign was removed, turning what had been a no parking zone into a zone where parking is permitted. So the request that we have received is that the ordinance be amended to officially include this known so that we can put the sign back up. Okay, I think I understand. Right. And you would like to speak, sir? If I may, uh, my name is William Abrashen, and I live on a dear place at 26. <clears throat> my wife Maria is here. And uh, I guess we're kind of the informal representatives of uh, people on that small, narrow street on this issue. And um, exactly right. Uh, we've been, we, I've been listening to what you've been saying, so I know that we're hardly alone in having uh, lots of issues about parking and speeding and traffic calming and actually got some ideas maybe uh, to come back with at a later date um, <clears throat> but we have a the uh, the parking on a dear place is burdened by the Y is right across the street and then um, the uh, synagogue is right down Prospect Street so when the there's a lot of uh, parking for the synagogue and also for the Y and uh, it gets very crowded. I, I'm not sure. Um, it's a narrow street, so I'm not even sure about that issue that you just raised about the width, and you know maybe somebody's going to take a look at that. But in any event, uh, just here on a very limited, limited request, um, we, um, when parking really became an issue, I uh, got in touch with Rich Parasoliti. By the way, incredibly responsive, very appreciated. Uh, uh, you don't always get that, but, but he really was. And I would just ask on the other side of the street, the side, I mean, guess more on the east side, closer to downtown, uh, there's a no parking zone, routinely disregarded. So got in touch with them and uh, asked whether just an extra sign could be posted there, but no change in the no parking zone, just a little bit better signage. So he very kindly took a look at it and said fine, good, added the additional sign. But in the process, he discovered that the no parking zone on the west side of the street, which has been no parking, I've been there since 03, and but I ride, ride my bike down the street, I had some correspondence with Chief Casper about bike riding in the past. And uh, so I've been doing that for about 30 years and that no parking designation has always been there. But Mr. Paris would be discovered that there was no underlying ordinance, and so we had the sign removed. So we just like to go back to where we were and uh, have, have an ordinance enacted to conform to what has for decades been the no parking zone, um, and just, just have it restored to the way it was. Clarify, we're, we're talking about sort of the small section where the where prospect intersects with Adair just to yeah exactly I mean I can't tell how many feet but it doesn't look like a very large section uh, I, well the uh, recommendation goes 60 feet and I think that's just about what it was before the sign was removed so basically just putting the sign right back where it used to be except now there'll be an ordinance to make it official and that's, uh, that's about it. And uh, I can tell you, it'd be very appreciated by people who live on Adair, not just us. And um, very narrow. Um, when people park illegally there, and I, don't, I don't know about access for emergency vehicles, but it'd be very tight. So again, just trying to get back to where we were. Um, but it's not doing it legal. Right. So could you look at the diagram we're looking at right here just to <coughs> yeah. talking about this? Yeah, it just looks 
significantly smaller to me than 60 feet, but so I'm just curious. I just want to make sure we're talking about so this small section before before this driveway. Uh, let's see. This crosscut. So red yeah. would be where where you would like it to be prohibited. Yes, that's where. Um, but if you come take, no. let's take a look, I just want to be sure we're. I'm just not quite. Yes, that that is definitely the area there. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And I, do you remember where the sign was? It was. Uh, where the <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm gonna learn how to do it's, these. Do you have that sign? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like sixty feet to you. It was yeah. on the other side. Yeah. This is really a good effort. That's really no parking. It's over here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is just Prospect Street right here. Right. right. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. It was a, so it right was around right there. there. I'm not right. sure exactly what sixty feet is, but right around where the arrow lands. That's where the, the no parking sign was for many, many years. So and then that was what was removed. And this picture of this car right here is where there's never supposed to be parking, but you say people often park anyway. Oh, yeah. And there's a photograph that. It is. Yeah, yeah, Thank you. And, uh, you know, it's a problem everywhere. Um, uh, because there's no ordinance to support it. That's why it goes like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll leave it. And, yeah, people, and it's just curious, too, because people will park right in front of a no parking sign when if they would just get themselves you know a little, little bit farther down the street there's plenty of legal parking so uh, but it's, I'm sorry. I'm, I just want to if I just may add it's especially having the no parking zones especially when people are coming around the corner right. uh, that's when they cut the corners and so that's it We've learned that 20 feet of that my question is going the other way so for people coming out of it there on the prospect with cars parked right do they park right up to the uh, corner mm -hmm. there's some visibility is an issue mm -hmm. yeah they do and um, thank you very much for raising that uh, I, I just add um, on prospect street coming out of a dare place turning right for some reason when the city redid the parking on prospect street there they uh, they they created a parking space that is very close to the intersection of Adair Place. Um, and it makes it, you have to go way out into the traffic lane before you can see traffic coming. Um, so uh, I'll just say that I worked for a year with a prior city councilor who is now a candidate for other public office and just he asked me to send photographs. He said he'd put it on the agenda, on and on and on. Went back and forth with him for, for a year on and off. And finally, I'm a pretty persistent guy, but he wore me down and I gave up because I just couldn't get a response. So uh, at some point, uh, that's not for tonight, but at some point if the city could take a look, the, the request there was just remove one parking space right near that intersection so people can actually see coming out of the dare place. But now that I've learned a little bit more about the system here tonight, maybe I'll give it another college try. But that's not on the agenda for today. Right. So um, as far as that's concerned, if you could send me an email about mm -hmm. that. And oh, I, I guess I have your email right here, and I'd be delighted. OK, because then I, I, and we, because um, you're right, that's, a, that's another topic. It's another topic, but it's um, one of these days, you know, Prospect Street, a lot of traffic goes pretty fast. One of these days, somebody's going to pull down a little too far and wham. So, right. uh, but so, anyhow, if we can just get our own, I don't know how many decades parking sign that was there uh, without an order to get the ordinance enacted so we can have the same sign put back in the same place. That'd be great. Thank you. Could you do me a favor and spell your last name, please? Yes, I thought you'd never ask. It's uh, ABR. A S H K I A. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I think, um, I don't know, I used to be a neighbor with James Lowenthal, and uh, I think I know, and Tony Hockstad, and so old homie. Uh, right, is, thank there, you. is there anything else uh, needed by. Actually, could, could I ask respectfully if, if, if this committee adopts that recommendation, does it then go to the city council for enactment? Yes. Yes. And would it be necessary for the residents to appear at city council or would that be fairly routine? I, I'm not familiar with that. 
Um, it, if something's before council, it's always wise to um, make an appearance for public comment and say a few words and have the group stand up. It's, it's always okay. helpful. And when would it? If, if, if this well, you know, I, I think we need to talk about this a little more and kind of figure this out. And um, but thank you for sharing. And okay, um, so we could we we'll, we can let you know um, after we discuss. We, we can let you know sort of what the next steps are. Right. Okay. Are you going to have more discussion on that now, or should we? We need to, de to deliberate on okay. how to handle this. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Sure. Appreciate your thank you. Appreciate you uh, giving us a chance to express this. Okay, so commissioners, so um, thoughts on this? <laughs> the street site is hard to see pulling out. It seems like it, it should be a no, no parking on that side. Okay. It, it's it's very congested in there anyway with all the other traffic. I don't think it would have much of an impact on residents as far as prohibiting them from parking there. I don't think it's used by residents. I think it's mostly used by people who are stopping to use the other facilities, and it just means a longer walking distance for them having to park in a, a space that's available. Uh, I have no hesitation. Yeah. A reservation on this at all. I don't see an issue. I'd make a positive recommendation. <coughs> Second. Discussion. My only question about this, is maybe a discussion for another time, is do we need to revisit this policy of taking signs down and putting them back up, and maybe we should look at the ordinance before taking that action? I, I'm sure it's all well intentioned, I'm sure, but um, it does seem a little silly that, that uh, it's all playing out this way. It, what I would say to that is. We can, when we become aware of a sign that is off, that says something that is not appropriate or yeah. not codified within the city ordinances, we can't leave the sign there, even if it makes total sense because it's unenforceable and it's wrong. And once we know about it, we have to remove the sign. So I completely support this request and understand why it would need to be there, but I understand your reasoning. It we as a city department can't leave a sign off that we know is incongruous with what is written. It's it's not appropriate behavior for us, particularly once we become aware of it. And the same goes for a speed limit sign. So my thoughts on this are after the Vernon Street discussion is that why we are not applying the same 20 foot uh, setback from Prospect Street in this case. I mean, it, it looks like we have, you know, we're going 60 feet on one side and then on the other, probably 120, 130 feet uh, on either side of the street, which is in many ways just what people were asking for on Vernon Street. And that, um, that when we set it to council, council was like, no, you can't be doing that. That's that you're taking away too many parking spaces. Um, I know I'm playing devil's advocate here. Sorry, uh, but the the thing is, what I, I I my and yes, we are. But if we send this forward, forward, it's with the idea of we're basically saying, yeah, this is what we were doing before, and um, but I I suspect that. City Council, it, it's the one thing we really like to discuss in detail, and we have lots of 5-4 votes. Everything else we kind of like, <laughs> we're all behind it or all against it. And that um, that uh, on Vernon Street, what, we spent about a half hour talking about it or more, and, uh, and that, um, so, so my concern is that that we, if we're going to do this, that we have the justification as to why we are, um, why we're going to go to 60 feet on one side and 120 or so on the other side, um, and outside of our usual criteria for doing this, you know, um, what what's the reason for it? Because if it if it's sight lines, that's you know that's what everybody says, and. Um, 
any thoughts on that? Isn't there a consistent recommendation from the DPW that would be the normal place where something like that would start? Or parking would start? Number of feet back from intersection or something? 20 feet. 20 feet. 20 feet. 20 feet. So that's the number. Yeah, so is it the, is it the fire hydrant um, burning that is pushing it back further? Right. So we have a reason for that one. Right. And that's why you're saying they should be case by case. So it can be something that. That's right. I mean, I think 20 yeah. feet is sort of your bare minimum just for sight line stuff, but then there could be other factors. Mm -hmm. um, we have others like front stairs are a problem sometimes, you know, with people's access to their own space. Well. You're on the agenda. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Knight, can I clarify something very briefly? That's right. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, I'm not sure about Vernon Street. Uh, I guess it's a different, different uh, situation, but 20 feet, if there is a 20 foot sign that uh, Mr. Parasoli put up mm -hmm. uh, on their place in the location we're talking about. And that is, it, 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 it's right next to the sidewalk on Prospect Street because the way they measure the 20 feet goes from the end of the right way. So basically that sign, it says, you know, don't park across the sidewalk, but that's, it doesn't really, do anything in terms of what we're trying to address. Um. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, there's there is a very wide tree belt here, and then there's the sidewalk. So you know, again, this is a case by case basis where every street and tree belt is different. So that's a, a it's a wide space from prospect to where. Uh, and where do they start to measure? Right from where. Where the 20 feet starts and where they end, where you start it from. At the point of turn or onto a dare and then 20 feet? It's the edge of the intersecting street. So, like at the curb? Right. So, if I went from where the curb is and then. So, it's here. Because the, the curbs are. So, that's why he's saying it's, you know, the sign's like somewhere right here. Yes. So you're starting from here. Right, right. Oh, it's the tree though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's the edge right here, right? And then down 20 feet. Right, yeah. This is where we're going to start, right? Oh. So, in some cases, some streets, they have a sign that says, you know, you can park here, you can park here, but it's not as wide as the The issue is we have to have a consistent policy. Right. We have to have a consistent <laughs> yeah. measure. If, if we can't, we can't really, you, you know, legally we can't use discretion and say, well, there's a higher radius here, or so we'll sort of move our tape measure. But I think you need to look at you know, what was the rationale and the history for the 20 foot mark? Where did that number come from? And, and is it logical in this day and age to extend that to 30 feet or reduce it to 15 feet? And that's a totally separate discussion from looking at why it appears to be 120 feet on the, uh, what would that be, the southerly side. And that's a whole separate discussion. So, right. I personally, I think we're, we're left with 20 feet until the ordinance changes, unless you've got a fire hydrant. Sorry, I had to say that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, well, so, um, any ideas on how we move this forward? I still made a motion that I feel oh, yeah, comfortable that's right. with. Oh, sorry, what was your motion? Um, that we return it so that, that the, the ordinance that was written by the DPW, so that that is 60 feet with no, um, uh, with no parking as it had been before, um, that it goes back to being, or that it's, that. And this is, I mean, just a, a little bit, you know, this is not the first time that we've found something that wasn't in the code that we thought was in the code, or we've um, been operating about was in in regards to something that. Um, you know what we thought was reality, and then we, and if we, when we look for it, it's not actually in the codes. So then we go back and we amend the code. 
that certainly we've done that before. We've done that before in this commission. We've done that before in council. Um, it's not that unusual to find something like this where, and basically we say like we're just codifying what has been practiced in reality. So I'm comfortable doing that. Okay. So we're not suggesting that it has to fall within the 20 feet. We're saying, or you were saying that you're okay with 60 feet. And you're thinking we can move that to council and present a I will solid sell it at council. <laughs> I will sell it at council. Okay. I'll, I'll vote with, with your yeah. council. We'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, and just to clarify, the, the southerly side of the street is not part of this site. I'm sorry. Yes. It's just so, um, yeah, so it's just that northwestern. Okay. So, uh, any more discussion? We have that motion on the table. We have, we've had a second. Any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, any, uh, any nays? Any abstentions? It passes unanimously. Okay. So just just to give you the next step. So, so this this will. Just to get notice of when that's going to happen. How how do we do that? Right. So this will. Um, it should be on the July sixteenth council agenda but only for referral. So it will then be uh, referred to um, a committee called Legislative Matters, which has to see all ordinances before they go to table. Um, council, so it would, I, I don't know their, their schedule off the top of my head, but it will go to Legislative Matters first, and then they will make a recommendation like we did tonight, and then it will go to the full council. So, uh, the earliest it could be a full council would be the August meeting by September. Okay, so would, would we have to, if we want to be heard on this, would we do anything before the full council meeting in August or September, or? It, I mean, as Mr. As Councilor Nash said, it wouldn't hurt to come to legislative matters and explain the reasoning. Um, I don't sit on the, you sit on that committee. Mm -hmm. Oh, neither one of us sits on that committee. Um, I'll be glad to do that. I just have to know how I get notice of where I'm supposed to show up. Uh, I, we can. It's on the city website. I believe they meet the first Monday of the month. I can check that for you. Um, and we uh, hold on one second. <laughs> I said I so do. It's committee on legislative matters. It's committee on legislative matters. And. Legislative Matters meets on, sorry, the sec 5 p.m. second Monday of the month, right here in Council Chambers. So that would be second Monday in July? In July, should be. You should always check the city website and make sure that, um, you know, the meeting is on and happening. There's a calendar and we'll tell you what the public meetings are. Okay, and is, it, is there a contact person from this body that you can, you can get my email from the okay. well, I do have your email, so can I yes. check in with you to just confirm that that's when I'm supposed to yes. be there? Great. Thank you so much. It's, um, it's a process, always. Yes. And, uh, I really appreciate the question. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I would, um, I'm looking at the time here, and so I'm gonna start picking off the stuff I wanna get to. Uh, I'd like to get to the Sutter Meets space at this point, uh, which is number two, which is J. And, um, and then I'd like to get to the Grove Avenue um, discussion. So, um, so the, uh, all right, I gotta pull this up. So that's the King Street. There it is. So, um, Donna, would you like to speak to this or? 
Uh, sure, a request was brought to TPC in December 2017 from Sutter Meets on King Street for 15 minute space for those making quick stops um, at their business or at the bank. Um, the owner stated that customers were having difficulty finding a spot. Um, the parking lot in the back, they have one, it's shared with the bank and other business. Um, so this ordinance would turn the existing metered space into a 15 minute space it's in front of pure RA. So okay. I, would, I would turn that into a 15 minute space. Um, I believe this has, there was an original recommendation for two 15 minute spaces, and we have it back revised to be one 15 minute space. That's why I remember it. Okay. <laughs> I think the request was for two, but the motion was for one. For some reason, I remember this going to council. I don't know why, but. I, it's been returned to us. Right, okay. With a request for one 15 minute space. I canceled it to two. It hit two, two and that has come back. That is correct. Corrected for one, or, or amended to one. So that's what we're voting on today. Um, and I'm just trying to remember. I remember when they came in, and there was a great discussion about access or being able to fully utilize the lot in the back of the bank. I can't remember, there was some issue. Yeah, there was just not enough parking was the issue. Okay. Was the, the parking lot was full, it's being shared you know, between multiple businesses, and if people just want to make a quick stop right in front of the store. Mm -hmm. That was their concern. Okay. Maggie, do you know offhand where the next 15 minute spot is? Where's the, where's the closest? I, I can't remember. Good dog spot. We, yeah, we discussed this. It's good dog spot. Good dog spot. Right. Yeah. 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 Right, which yeah. we addressed yeah. as well. Okay. Yeah. So one or two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I well, it's just a little like I'm not say, but I'm gonna move a positive recommendation on this ordinance because I'm pretty sure I moved a positive recommendation on the first time around. I will second that. Okay. Any discussion? Um, I just want to add that um, I stopped by uh, Sutter Meats prior to the meeting and spoke with uh, the wife of the owner. I didn't get her name. And she was happy to hear this was moving forward. And um, she was wondering when it would be. And I'm like, yeah, September or something like that. But anyway, the, um, I was clear that this is for one space. And, um, and she was pleased to hear that. So um, any more discussion? All in favor of a positive recommendation, send this forward and say aye. 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 Uh, any no's? Any abstentions? Okay. Yes. Cross this stuff off. Okay. Um, since we have people from uh, members of the public here to discuss uh, Grove Avenue. like to speak? I'm Linda Butler. Uh, I live at 74 Grove Avenue in Leeds and I submitted a request for a small no parking zone opposite my driveway and opposite the driveway of my neighbor Deb Jacobs from 82 uh, Grove Ave. We both have very short driveways. Mine is 15 feet long and 9 feet wide and when I back out of it if there is a car parked directly opposite the street is only 19 and a half feet wide there. So a car parked opposite sometimes makes it impossible for me to get out and, and turn. And there's been a lot of parking there in recent months because two new houses have gone in on the end of our dead end, uh, just opposite where Deb's house is. And so there are a lot of um, construction vehicles parking there. The new owners tend to park on the street and because they each have their own driveway, there's that much less frontage for people to park on. We also have a lot of dog walkers that come to park there, and um, people who come to go into the, the woods to go down to the river. And so if it were just a neighbor parking there, and I was dashing out the door trying to get somewhere in time, and I could recognize my neighbor's car, and I could run and ask them to move it, that'd be one thing. But with strangers parking there who disappear into the woods, there's no way that I can get anybody to move their car. 
So that really leaves me having to either drive over my lawn or drive over my lawn. So um, it would be very helpful to have no parking there, especially in the winter time because the snow makes the street even narrower. And uh, my neighbor across the street also has some um, forsythia bushes that tend to grow out over the street, and that, that makes it a little narrower too. So it would be very helpful if we could get in and out of our driveways when we need to. Okay. Yeah, I've I've been at my house since um, November of, of '73, and it is a narrow street. And I have to say, DPW is great about if they can't get down there, they'll frequently come back and replow. But that's pretty inefficient use of, of their time and and gas. People park and when it's snowing out to go cross country skiing. And the rail trail comes out at the end of Grove Ave. Um, I'm in the second house from the, from the end. And we get a lot of people, and it's great that people like to, um, you know, like to use the, the rail trail. The people who bring the trailers and um, go down to the river for six hours and leave their dirty diapers um, uh, down there and uh, across from our houses, not so much. But uh, most people are, are really considerate, and, and it is hard to um, to get out. And if you're if you can't if I can't back in and I'm having to back out, I've got to worry about people coming off the rail trail. And some of these folks ride their bikes pretty fast, um, and it, it, we have we have we have a shared space, which is great. Um, cars, pedestrians, bicycles. Um, it's it's always worked fairly well. But it, it really, in the last, I'd say, um, four or five years, it's, it, it's just getting more and more difficult to, um, to get in and out. And we don't want to, I mean, we don't want to have the problem pushed down to our neighbors, but at the same time, we want to be able to get out. Um, Thanks. And Deb, can you give your full name and address for Yes, uh, Deborah, D-E-B-O-R-A-H, Jacobs, J-A-C-O-B-S, 82 Grove Avenue, not Street, in Leeds. Okay, so we don't have a specific or a, a proposed ordinance to look at here, right? No, no. DPW has not drafted an ordinance okay, for this. Good, and that, um, um, I like it that way. <laughs> um, so uh, this is this is actually a case of uh, the uh, we, we're we're tweaking the, the new system a little bit here, which is that uh, people using the um, the online request system where we were immediately going to drafting an ordinance and then we were discussing it whether or not to send it forward. And I think in this case, we're, the, we're, we're taking a step back to say, do we want to consider drafting an ordinance here at all in the first place? And um, before making, having you know, Maggie go out and do some work, do we, we feel that that's appropriate here? Um, so, discussion. Um, just a couple of comments. Um, very, very narrow street, um, 20 feet wide. So it is, you know, sort of based on our 12 foot metric here, it's an and eight feet for parking. Um, it's definitely difficult to get through when vehicles are parked here. Um, it, it's DPW's position that it, it doesn't make sense to create two small no parking zones, you know, directly outside these houses. Um, just not that we're not sympathetic, certainly, but I think we need to look at the street as a whole, which is why we're here to have a conversation mm -hmm. about it. But, you know, drafting an ordinance for two small, no parking zones is not a, a good approach, in our opinion. Any other thoughts? Um, the, and the thing I notice is we're talking opposite sides of the street, very close to each other, and that often what what we'll do. We live next door to each other. 
So we're, we're talking about a, a single But you have zone. a negative and a positive number, right? I think you've got the numbers wrong. I oh, maybe that's it. Somewhere. Okay.